Blog Talk Radio. Effects of the holidays? You're still reeling from them? What's going on? I don't, I don't know if it's on my end or whatnot. I'm just using my laptop today because I don't know how reliable it's going to be. Hopefully, it's not going to crash <laughs> on me, but uh, we'll see. So you, you, you sounded like you were in warp speed there. It's like you said something, all of a sudden, wham. It's like, where did the holidays <laughs> go? Didn't... So, anyways, how were your holidays? No, they were good. They were good. Yeah. Uh yeah. spent some time with uh family as usual. Uh had a lot lot to eat. And you know, the typical stuff you do on holidays. Yeah. And, and what what are those typical things? Like come on. We all we all well, celebrate differently. Oh, like I said, we, we got together with family and we had a lot of homemade pasta. <laughs> homemade pasta. No nookies? Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> homemade, yeah. homemade, homemade homemade nookies, right? No, that's that's uh, throughout, throughout the rest of the year. We had uh, ravioli and tortellini for uh, the holiday season. Oh, okay. Uh, 2011. Uh, I can't. I can't believe it, man. Uh, one more. One more year, and we're dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 2012. Look out. I, I don't know. Should we fear 2012? 2012. Oh, so much. So much crap around 2012. I don't know. I I I I don't know whether to believe that or not. I mean, I think they've they've totally. I don't know. Going about well, thinking about the, the the whole 2012 thing completely all screwed up. I think they again like the the millennium uh, bug and everything else. They they want you to fear so you um, store your food, buy 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 before the end is upon us. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they've really uh, overdone it, I think. Well, you know, yeah. Well, hey, they're just uh, revving up. They're just starting. I mean, we got. Uh, I think what is it? Somebody said this year. Yeah, I, I heard somebody's theory it was even November of this year. A date in November uh, was going to be the actual date that we all perish. Uh, the apocalypse is upon us. Is is actually not December. Uh, of next year, 2012, but actually November 2011. Well, hey, if it ends up being this year, so be it. Well, we won't know the difference after anyway, if that's the case. Well, I mean, let's look at it this way. Uh, December 2012 is actually going to be the sequel of the apocalypse. So it should be pretty interesting to see how the, how well it does after the first apocalypse. Yeah, exactly. Um yeah, 2011 has been pretty uh, busy uh, so far. Um, a lot of stuff going on already. And uh, what are we in the what the third week, second week? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been paying attention. Uh, I, I just uh, did a, a guest speaking engagement um, and, and completely free. I again, I don't do these things to, for money. Um, uh, I was invited to do a guest speaking presentation 
um, on the paranormal uh, for the Probus um, Club, which is worldwide. Uh, I, I spoke in front of uh, 130, and, and what they are, a retired businessman. And I'm t- I'll tell you, Alex, that was the weirdest thing that I've had to do. Uh, and it was a tough sell. I mean, think about it. I mean, we all know with the paranormal, men are the toughest sell. They're the biggest skeptics when it comes to the paranormal, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, I, I mean, obviously, you know, when I presented uh, what I did and, and, you know, I showed them, you know, some quote-unquote evidence and some tools and tra- uh, things that are used in the paranormal and, you know, explanations of certain things, um, I think they really got a uh, one thing that was really neat was uh, you know I was explaining the EMF meter, and uh, I had a couple there with me, and I you know I said hey here, here you go pass it around test them out you got a cell phone turned on, see the you know people know what gauss meters are and stuff like that and they they were from, kind of familiar with them, and there was one guy who came up to me at the end of the presentation he goes. You know, when when I finally got the one uh, meter and, you know, I tested it out and I, I put it up to my chest and it went off like it, it was, like these crazy rings. It was going off the meter. And he goes, I have a steel plate in my chest. Does that mean I'm haunted? <sighs> uh, you know, and, and this guy was like, this guy was in his 70s, so I didn't want to say anything, you know what I mean? I just, I didn't want to say anything bad, you know, but... I said, you know, it could be just, you know, the plates inner, you know, mingling with your body's electrical internal, whatever. You should have asked. Should have asked him if he had a pacemaker. No, he didn't. Yeah, I actually did. No, he didn't. He didn't have a pacemaker. He just had a plate in his chest. I think he had some sort of weird surgery, and they had to put like a plate there. I don't know. I, I asked him, you know, uh, have you had any problems with any TSA agents lately? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, maybe, uh, no, maybe the metal maybe the metal they used was from a car accident. Exactly. Um but yeah, that that was uh, that was interesting. And what was really cool is they they donated uh $100 in the the group's name uh Southern Ontario Paranormal uh name my name uh to the Burlington Food Drive, which was really cool. I I really appreciate that. So I wanted to thank them for that um and the opportunity to uh you know Present the paranormal to people who, um, hey, it was just different. It, what was really neat at, at the end of it, um, you know what? Even though it was a tough sell, we had a lot. I mean, I had a lot of people approach me after the presentation, asking me all these questions and telling me about their personal experiences and stuff. And it, it was pretty neat. It was uh, pretty interesting. Um, you and I have been asked to do uh, a, a guest speaking engagement uh, coming up in August, right? That's right, this summer at the uh, CNE. Yeah, that, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll be, be pretty cool. Um, we'll see and, how that goes. And that's, yeah, and, and you know, we got to thank Richard for that, Richard Palmazano, who's uh, a good friend who's been on the show a few times. Um, that'll be pretty interesting. And I, I'm assuming... That's correlating with his upcoming book and the research that he's done there. Well, the speaking engagement that he's asking us to do is strictly based on our own paranormal experience, I guess, or what we've done. But yeah, I think what he's going to be doing for his piece is correlating to the investigation he's done at the scene. Yeah, it's uh, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, well, tonight. Uh, the first of three remaining shows here that we have at BTR. Um, and, and we're certainly planning to go out with a bang here. Uh, tonight we have uh, returning to the show, who's been on the show in the past. It's been a while, and it's, it, it's great to have him back, and that's Brian Leffler. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're simply going to, I guess, bust the paranormal wide open. No, no holds no holds are barred tonight. Um and you know, rightfully so. Uh there's there's a lot of crap going on uh in, in this wonderful world of the paranormal that uh I, I guess, you know, many of the listeners are, you know, 
interested in. Obviously, they wouldn't be tuning into the show if they didn't have an interest of us interest in the paranormal. So you know what? We're, we're gonna we're gonna bust it right open. I think. Um, so uh, right after break, we're gonna take a quick break here. Uh, uh, Alex, did you want to add anything before we go to break here? Um, just. Basically, what you said in one of your messages, I think on Facebook, if anybody has any ideas as to where we could land our show, it would be great help. Um, okay. Um, what, what what we'll do is we'll take a break here, and when we come back, we'll, we'll have uh, Brian Leffler. Uh, so hold tight, and we'll be right back.
Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens due to the crisis that is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. The murders are taking place in villages and cities and rural homes and suburbs with no apparent pattern nor reason for the slayings. It seems to be a sudden general explosion of, of mass homicide. Now you all must die. <laughs> All right, and welcome back to uh, Dark Discussions here on Nocturnal Frequency Radio. Um, once again, thank you for tuning in. This is the uh, first of only three shows left here on Blog Talk before we say adios, amigos, uh, into the out paranormal door, whatever. Um, welcome back, Alex. Glad to be. Uh oh. The wild. Do we have another? Do we have another time warp with Alex again? Alex, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, no, you just faded into oblivion there for a sec there. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? The lines are open. Uh, they will be throughout the uh, throughout the evening. Uh, if you have a question for Brian, Brian Leffler will be on the show here in a, in a few seconds. Here, nine one four eight zero three four zero nine five. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you would like to add anything to the uh, conversation. Um, you know what, Alex? Let, let's bring uh, Brian in. Brian, how are you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Not bad. Hey, good, good. Great. Uh, it's great to have you back, man. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. It, it's been a, a long time. For quite a while. Yeah. yeah. And you know yeah, what? Good. Did you want? You know what? Let's start right there. Let's start right there, um, Brian. What what's been going on? Why why the exit from the paranormal field? Uh, you, you took a break for a while. Why? All the BS. That's the reason. You know, that's the the number one reason was all the BS, the backstabbers, the crap, the people that have no clue what in the heck they're doing out there, thinking that they know what they're doing. Um, people learning everything the wrong way, using the wrong equipment. It goes, you know, every aspect of the field, you know, is 85% at least wrong. So that's, so you, you'll probably get a caller or two tonight because I'm sure I'll pick a few of them off. <laughs> like, great. Well, hey, we, we, we invite callers. We certainly invite them. They're always entertaining, entertaining, especially the callers that we have. I uh, love them. Uh, you know what, Brian? Give you know, give everybody just a, a quick background as to uh, you know your foray into the back, uh, into the paranormal. What you've you know, how long you've been you know, in, how how long you've invested in the paranormal. Well, I've been doing it for almost 15 years now. Um, a few more months, it'll be 15 years that I've been doing it. Um, started off um, completely and totally a non-believer. I would have told you were nuts if you told me ghosts existed. Um, and once I lived in a couple of haunted houses, basically, I started to ask questions, started to look at things, started to uh, do a lot of reading, which is basically should be your first few years in the field, period, is reading, um, trying to gain knowledge of what's going on. Um, and then I started started uh, with my camera in the basement filming mundane anomalies like dust and pollen and all that stuff so I know how that looks on film um, going from there to uh, basically your small investigation cemeteries trying to see what I could find um, those kind of things and eventually worked it up into um, investigating homes, businesses um, larger stuff in our area um, like attractions everybody called us when they needed a place investigated um, Started the uh, Northern Minnesota Paranormal Investigators. Um, have since disbanded that team and uh, started Northern Paranormal Research, which is the current team that's uh, just 
just starting out fresh with it. Um, collected some fantastic evidence over the years. Became a believer that ghosts are pretty much the evidence has shown me how it all works. And uh, here I am, <laughs> you know. Okay. So. Um, we, we, you know, we got a question in the chat, and, and we'll bring it up because it's obviously something that uh, you know is a thorn in a lot of people's uh, backsides uh, when it comes to the paranormal. Um, the, the question mm-hmm. is: uh, So, what are other paranormal groups doing wrong in your mind, um, Brian? What, what what are you seeing them doing wrong? Wow, this well, this is a question that actually will be answered over the period of the entire two hours. Okay, uh, let me just touch on a few aspects of it, and of course, we'll go into further detail on each one as we talk. Um, basically, um, most of the groups that are out there are thrill seekers, not researchers for evidence. Um, A lot of the groups that are out there are looking for fame and fortune. They're trying to ride a wave that's coming into shore and they're, they're out there with their surfboards, man. They're trying to get, uh, they're trying to be the next taps show, you know, Um, that's what they want. Um, They're willing to stab everybody in the back for it. They're not actually using the right equipment when they're trying to collect evidence. Um, They don't know what evidence actually is and what is actually a personal experience. Um, they try to come off as um, scary as opposed to professional. Um, They go into people's homes, do completely and totally the wrong things. They don't know how to handle clients. Um, They're basically on a thrill-seeking ride. You, you, you know when you, you said uh, the whole back stuff, you know, exactly what you explained there. It just reminds me, I went into a, a, a grocery store today, and um, it, it's like a discount. It was a discount grocery store. And I swear to God, man, people were climbing over each other. Uh, they were pushing people out of the way. Um, I mean, even kids. Uh, to get to the deals and stuff. I, I mean, it was complete pandemonium. And that's exactly what the paranormal as it is to me right now with a lot of what's happening um, seems to me exactly what you're saying. Um, You know, a majority of it, and and we're not saying all of it. There are people out there doing some really good work, Um, some honest good work, Uh, people who do know what they're doing. Uh, But like, like a portion of what you said there, um, you know, wanting to, to get into the field for the fame and fortune. Um, let's be honest, right, uh, Brian? Uh, what what fame and fortune? Uh, like I look at, uh, at what's happening with these people who are supposedly para celebrities in the you know the paranormal right now, and and to me they they I mean, who are they? I mean, they're people I that honest, have, that'll. Do the dirty work, basically. I mean, come on. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, okay, let's well, let's start with television. Okay, that's one of the biggest thorns in my side is is television. I can't even watch any of the shows that are on TV anymore. You know, I watched them a little bit. Um, got really annoyed. You know how you know how for like football games and stuff, they make those styrofoam bricks you can throw at your TV. You know yeah. those kind of things. That's they need one for the paranormal shows, for the real investigators that are watching it to have a brick to throw at the TV. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a case in point. Uh, I was watching um, Ghost Adventures. Okay, this was a few years ago. They went into the um, catacombs in um, Scotland. They're, uh, and they're, they're down in the catacombs. They're filming a teddy bear. I don't know, maybe some of your listeners will remember this show. Um, this, ted, this little girl, supposedly a spirit of a little girl, flips this teddy bear, moves this teddy bear, sheds things with, in with teddy bears. They took a tri-field meter and they put it down there. It was this big open chamber. Um, they put a camera that spanned the whole room, and they put one tight on the tri-field meter. Okay? Well, 
they watch it when they're showing the show. And I watched this when it premiered, and I see a, an inset shot on the screen of the tri-field meter, and, I, and then they, they show the, the wide angle with, you know, the whole ball of wax in the whole room from a distance. You could just, you know, you could, they're small in the room. Okay, I'm watching it, and supposedly the teddy bear flips and the needle bounces on the uh, tri-field meter at the same time. I was absolutely infuriated when I watched the show, you know, and I had, there were other people that said, oh, it's great evidence, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a bunch of BS. In fact, I was, I was so PO'd at the end of that show that I actually, as soon as the show was over, got on the phone and called Nick Groth and told him how they botched the evidence. And he goes, well, what do you mean? Why, how did we botch the evidence? And I said, well, and I told him, you know, I, I described, I said, this is how you had it set up. I said, you know what? A little film editing, and I can make a tri-field meter, meter needle bounce at the same time as the teddy bear moves. That's simple. That's a piece of cake. That's not evidence of squat. I said, I said, you take a camera and you put it in tight on the tri-field meter and the teddy bear. I said, the one camera you had spanning the whole chamber was good. Okay, that prevents anybody from coming into the, the room to mess with any of your equipment or cause any kind of results. And I said, your, your tight shot on the tri-field meter was bogus because you don't know when that went off. Could have you never know. And then just a little bit of film editing, and all of a sudden it's at the same time. And he thought about it for a second. He goes, yeah, we did screw that up, didn't we? I said, you know, you did. I said, you guys wasted your time. I said, I told him, too, flat out. I said, if you guys ever want to know how to do this right, give me a call. You got my number. <laughs> I did. Did they call you? Of course not. TV shows don't care about doing it right. They only care about ratings and selling advertising. Absolutely. You know, it's it's just like all these shows. I mean, it's just like, okay, and a lot of people don't know this um, about TAPS. Okay, TAPS were actually the fourth people asked to do that show. And I'll tell you, the first person that was asked to do that show was Barry Taff out of California. Remember the movie The Entity? San yeah, Pedro yeah. Haunting? Yep. Okay, Barry Taff. Um he was the number one person that was asked to do that show, and he turned it down, same as the other two, the next people asked. And do you know why they turned it down? They what? turned it down for one reason, because Pilgrim Films told them flat out in the beginning, before they ever started this show, we were evidence for the viewer. Wait, repeat that, That's because we had the, a little... We, we had a little Skype up again. Uh, you, you went into like oh, a, okay. a vortex. Just, just repeat the, that. The reason that the first three turned down the Ghost Hunter show was because Pilgrim Films made it blatantly clear that they were going to fake evidence for the viewers. Pap said, I don't care. Let's do it. I want to be famous. So now they're famous. Yeah, you see, it, but and, and and that's that's exactly uh, my feeling about that show. Um, you know, um, of course, you know uh, the, the the first season was sort of a, a warm warm up. Obviously, you know, not doing as much. Where uh, you know, say season two on, uh, they really let the cat out of the bag with with with, with what was going on. I mean, there there are a lot a lot of people who knew more. Um, faking was going on that then they I think that they really yeah. thought well I, I knew it before the show ever aired that it was you know yeah. it, so I was able to watch it for entertainment but the thing is it quit being entertaining you know as a real investigator watching this and watching them screw it up week after week and not know what they're doing you know and when Brian Harnois took off running because they saw this Shadow, wherever they were, it was Eastern State, I think, or wherever they were, and he took off, you know, the run dude incident. You know, if he were part of my team, I would have said, yeah, just keep on running, dude, because you're no longer part of my team. Keep running, because you're not, you're no longer part of it. You're done. You know, and everybody on my team knows that if they run from a ghost, now, unless they're being, having the crap beat out of them, 
they're getting seriously injured, yeah, they should run out of that situation. But if they see a ghost and they run away from it and not toward it, see ya. You're no longer a part of my team ever. You never that, will be. You, know, you don't get a second chance. You get nothing. And that, that goes without saying. I mean, obviously, if you're going to go into, for instance, a private location, a home, uh, to, to investigate uh, claims of the paranormal and, and something does happen, and, yeah, you do uh, come face-to-face with something that you might think is a ghost or whatever, and you, you uh, turn around, run, scream, or whatever else, I mean, how's that going to look on the rest of the group, uh, you know, in terms of the, the owners? I mean, exactly. wait a let sec, me, you guys me, are supposed to be giving me a hand here right. explaining, and this guy's taking off running? What's going on? Right, and this is something to think about, too, okay? And I want everybody to think about this. Get this mental image in your mind. If one of your family members, you know, brother, sister, mother, father, son, daughter, wife, husband, whoever, is in your house and they cut themselves really bad and they're bleeding really bad and you call 911 and the ambulance shows up, okay? The paramedics come to your door. They see the person is bleeding and they go, oh, my God, I can't handle it. Run out the door, jump in their ambulance and drive away, okay? How would that make you feel right there? How would that make you feel? And that is exactly what happens when these little rookies go into these places get the crap scared out of them and run away, you know, and that, I'll tell you, that, that drives me absolutely bananas to no end. Oh, yeah, no, you and me both, you and me both. Uh, Alex. Me three, me three, no, I was going to say, I, I agree with that as well. I've seen that happen uh, as well, just not, not on TV, obviously, because I don't bother watching those shows, but um, like, even when I go to some of these, like, um, but this, like sometimes you know, groups of old meetings at the libraries or what have you, and they show and they tell, talk about the experiences, and then they talk about how they heard this noise and they ran away. It's like, well, what's the point? <laughs> you went into right. uh, warp speed again on us, Alex. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. You know what? It's this wireless connection. It's screwing it up. So uh, at the midway bro- point, uh, Brian, uh, yeah. I'm gonna disconnect and I'll call you back once I got my PC up and running. Should uh, solve the problem. Um, yeah. yeah well, it, you know. Go ahead. Can go I, ahead, can I give you one other one other thing on these groups too? Go for it. That comes to mind, and it, and it goes with it goes with the running away thing. Okay, and it, in a way, um, we have a group that's fairly that's local here. Another group that, um, you know, were, were they were in a they were in a place they investigated it and they said it was a very haunted location. Okay. Um, my old team, we happened to have a guy who knew these people and these people were, they ran some kind of a little store out of this location. They lived upstairs and in the back and then they had a store in the front. Well, they, we were, we heard how haunted this place was. One of their people actually ran out of the place scared and wouldn't go back in and all this kind of garbage. We went there to investigate. Okay. And, of course, we always enter into every investigation the proper way, and that is completely and totally neutral. When you hear TAP say, we go to debunk, yeah, bull. You don't go to debunk. You don't go to support. You go in neutral, let the evidence speak. Like watching an episode of CSI, okay? They don't jump to conclusions. They take the evidence, read the evidence, and form a conclusion from the evidence. That's how you approach a paranormal investigation. You go in completely neutral. People can tell you stories. They can tell you that it's the most haunted place on earth, or they can tell you it's it's candy land. It doesn't make any difference. You go in the same every single time, and that is completely and totally neutral. Not to debunk, not to support. You let the evidence speak for itself, and strictly evidence, which we'll get into what evidence actually is. But yeah, yeah. Uh, this team, we we go into this house, and we go to the upstairs part of this house, and what do we see? What's the very first thing we see? We see three or four water bongs. We see enough booze bottles that if they were full, you could open a bar. Okay, <laughs> beer cans, everything's all over the place. It's like, okay, there's my first flag at the flagpole that says hallucinations, okay, for most of the crap. Okay, we we start investigating. We get out the EMF meters, the gauze meters, and all that kind of stuff, and we find 
an extremely high amount of EMF. Okay, we track it down. These people outside their bathroom window upstairs, I'm, and I'm talking like 18 inches, two feet outside a bathroom window, is an electrical transformer on a pole. Okay, I told these people, I said, you know what? We got no evidence in this house. What you need to do is call an electrician. You've got high yeah. EMF, which causes hallucinations. Then you've got drug use going on upstairs. You've got people boozing it upstairs. You combine in that EMF, of course they're going to see stuff. You know? No doubt well, about the it. Well, EMF so, alone. Just, the EMF but, alone, but if they're us. exposed to high amounts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had team members starting to hallucinate. And myself included. There were a couple of times where I started to hallucinate things, and it's like, wow, I really got to pull the reins in on this. And it was well, all due to that high EMS field. We we had it. We had a case. I remember. I remember going, uh, uh, being contacted by this woman who um, her son was, um, her son was, uh, you know, seeing seeing people at night. Um, you know, okay, that could be any number of things. Uh, you know, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. But uh, what it, what it turned out to be was the fact that this this the headboard was was uh facing the other side to the kitchen and on the other side was a uh, microwave oven. No fun. You know, and it's, it's so you know you the, the back area alone was like exposed to you know high amounts of EMF standing. Right. Uh just imagine if the thing was constantly going and this kid sleeping, you know. Right. Move the bed. Oh, absolutely. That's all you got to do. Move the bed. The kid's fine. He's yep. not seeing anything. He's being he's he's being exposed to high amounts of 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 frequency. You know, it's it's simple. That that's that's what kills. Me. And this is one of the things that I did in my presentation, Brian, is I explained EMF. The reason why it's a tool that that many people use because of the frequencies that we do not understand. It's like carbon monoxide. We can't see it. We don't mm-hmm. understand it. Uh, how many people do you know have a have a an EMF meter in their home? Not very many, unless they do I this. Mean, <laughs> I mean, honestly, do you think it should, should be a something that that every family should have? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I think they should. You know, they should check stuff out and see if they're getting anything. I mean, you know, you go into if you go into buy a house, for example. You know, I mean, how many homes have there been extremely high EMF? In fact, I couldn't, I can't remember where it was. But there was a case, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, I heard about with a house that had three intersecting power lines over their house, where it was a junction of like three different major power lines all intersected right over their house. And the EMF was extraordinarily high in the house. And, you know, I mean, hey, if you're going to go buy a house, take an EMF meter with you and check it out beforehand. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we're obviously going to get into that. Like, I mean, that, that's another uh, point that you and I discussed uh, quite a bit on the phone there the other day, um, Brian, the fact that, um, the, you know, the tools uh, that, that many of these groups employ, I mean, the paranormal period, um, a lot of these people have no clue how to use them. Um, right. You know. You know. So if you ask me, if you have no clue about the inner workings of, say, a, a digital camera or uh, an EMF uh, Gauss meter or whatever, and, and you're and you're presenting, you know, the the general public with evidence. Wait a sec here. I'm sorry. You're to me. You're not qualified to, to claim you have evidence, uh, proper evidence. Uh, you know, it just number one. I think. Uh, well, I I don't think I. It should be mandatory that well, not mandatory. I don't want to say mandatory. That's like a you know I don't know, uh, uh, draconian word to use in the paranormal, but. Um, you know, I think you should at least understand the tools that you're working with. If if you're you know, you come into a group and you want to specialize 
and I'll say specialize. I don't want to say become an expert because that's another thing that I'm sure we'll dive into, the expert, the certified, you know, the whole nine yards there. Uh, does that does that make does that oh, make yeah. <laughs> Certified. Uh, but anyhow. Um, the certi- the certification. Uh, yeah. But, you know, um, they're right now and um but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's people out there, and, you know, one of the big ones, and I'll throw her name out there because I'm not afraid to, Patty Starr, okay? Let's use her <laughs> for example. She does this big, elaborate training thing on the paranormal, okay? Um, she charges, I think, between her two classes to actually get her certificate. It's 500 and some odd bucks. I could be wrong. That, that was a while ago. It may have changed by now. I'm not sure. But I know at least at one point she was charging less 500 and some odd bucks for this training course. Her website, and I'm looking at her ground photos on this website. One of them was a red angry orb, okay, that I could see. I, I could see that it was taken during the day. I could see where the shadows were, which told me where the sun was, which told me about what time of the day it was taken. It was taken in the afternoon. Roughly, I would afternoon, okay? This angry red orb was obviously a lens flare. You see more than a lens flare. Now, this is a person that's going to take 500 and some of my bucks and say, okay, you're certified as a, and I'll use the term right now because that's the term they would use and I would never use it toward myself, ghost hunter, because ghost hunters are amateur thrill seekers. Paranormal investigators are the real deal. Okay, so anybody listening, think about that one, too. If you call yourself a ghost hunter, you're an amateur thrill seeker, period. And I don't care. Be mad at me if you want, but that is absolutely what the term is. Um, But, you know, somebody who's willing to take your money and then train you with all this BS and smoke and mirrors, come on, give me a break. It's crap. You know, uh, you know, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm, you know, add to that uh, another uh, well-known person in the paranormal uh, community. That's really, really, I, you know, I, I, I pretty much slashed him off the respectability uh, list, my respectability list. As somebody, I, I read his books um, years ago, um, and it really, really disheartened me to to find this out. And that's Joshua P. Warren. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know who he is. I, you know, he's been on Ghost Hunters. Uh, yeah, you know, he's charging nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred dollars for I think I think it's a, like a six week course to become a, a certified paranormal investigator. Hey, come on, guys. Let's, let's face it. It's a tough economy. They have to make money somehow. Yeah, but the, you know what? Okay. Yeah. But you know what? Do we still, if we have a con artist out there robbing people, do we still say it's a tough economy, we've got to make money somewhere? If somebody comes into your house and steals your DVD player and your flat screen TV and hocks it, do you look at them and say, well, we know it's a tough economy? Too bad? <laughs> it's the same <laughs> thing. You know, yeah, you exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, not, you know, it, it, the same could be said for uh, several aspects. That, like we we've mentioned this a million times on on the show. Uh, you know, uh, you know everything from somebody claiming, like for instance, uh, again there was a case out this way, Brian, uh, where uh, a couple of uh, you know I don't want to say investigators, but they're they're not investigators; they're frauds, if anything. Uh, went into a house and uh, you know a house owned by an elderly couple. Uh, who was having some issues with uh, what they thought was something paranormal. Um, uh, they, they were seeking help. help. Uh, they contacted these two individuals. Uh, the two individuals showed up, uh, did their uh, their mumbo-jumbo there. Uh, you know, they scoped the house and uh, told, the, told the, uh, the couple that they had uh, evil presence, uh, demonic presence, and that the house had to be cleansed oh, yeah. or cleared of the of the evils in the house, and char and went ahead and charged them eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand eight thousand dollars to have their house cleared, and of course, these people are are completely oblivious to that because they think you know okay fine you know like if that 
has to be done and we have to pay, then fine. They thought they were truly going to be helped and that, you know, these people were going to, quote, unquote, exterminate the evil in the house. And, of course, that didn't help, uh, you know. And, uh, right. you know, obviously it turned out where uh, the, the elderly couple uh, took them to court and sued their ass. But, you know, this is what I mean. This is this this is going on on a daily basis uh, here everywhere. in the paranormal. It's ridiculous. Some of them we get mad at and we bar them from places and others we put on TV. Hmm. No. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's absolutely ludicrous um, to uh, you know, and that that's again I'll refer back to my the presentation I gave there last Tuesday. You know, um, again I had a lot of snickering going on because that's how a lot of these people view the paranormal as, as something hokey, because of what's being presented yeah. to the general pop, you know, through right. TV through through people's personal experiences, it's it's ridiculous, and you know. I'm I'm completely ashamed of it. I, I mean, sure, I, I'm I'm in uh, you know in the presence of, of some some great people, like uh, you know, and I keep referring to uh, again, uh, you know, uh, Alex, obviously Brian, yourself, uh, Naz, uh, Stephen, uh, the Shadows Project. I, I completely uh, respect the work that they do uh, because I know they they you know they cover their bases. And they're very serious about what they do and, you know, uh, presenting what could possibly be uh, paranormal. Uh, they they know the differences. They know what to weed out. I mean, people have to understand that if you're a paranormal investigator, you're not going in there to look for the paranormal. You're first. You're going in there to look for what is explainable. And let me tell you, 90% of what's going on is explainable. I mean, do you agree, Brian? Well, somewhat. I, I agree that you you go in. I think you go in totally neutral. And yeah. when something happens, okay, let's take for example. Okay, um, I want to use something that a lot of people may have seen um, on Ghost Hunters here several years ago. They were in a private home, and there was a woman under her her, her lazy boy in the living room kept hearing a knocking on the floor. Okay. And they were able to track it down to loose pipes. Remember that one? Has anybody seen that yeah. one? I'm sure maybe some yeah. of the listeners have. Okay, yeah, you found a cause for the knocking. Okay, and granted, you're going to take a look. You're not going in there with the attitude of it has to be something mundane. You're also not going to go in with the attitude of how to be a ghost, okay? You take all of your evidence, you take everything that you're able to find out, and you let it all, you throw it on the scales, and you see which way it leads, okay? And that's what you do, and that's how you make a determination. There is no other way to make a determination. And when it comes to evidence, it has to be scrutinized, you know? And I think we should wait for the, the big one after the, in the second half of the show, which is going to be what is evidence and why some of this garbage can't be considered as evidence. Um, but, you know, you weigh it all out, you go into these places and you make a determination based on your evidence only. Okay. Personal experiences are great. If I go into a home, somebody's home and I've got books flying off the shelf at me and doors slamming and lights going on and off, I can tell the homeowners that I had personal experiences, but if I didn't capture any evidence, I still don't have evidence. It's a personal experience, and it's different from evidence. It's not the same thing. One does not go hand in hand with the other, period, ever. You know, Nas, Nas uh, Stephen, in, in the uh, chat room uh, mentioned something very, very important, I think. Um, uh, you know, um, he mentioned the more he seeks out the paranormal, the more skeptical he becomes. Uh, that's something that rings true to myself as well. I mean, it's just like learning something. Uh, I think I think that's the way uh, science would view it too, I think, uh, you know, in trying to explain things. Again, weeding away at the crap that we're seeing. Uh, right. And there, there's, there's a lot of it you know, that we a, can simply explain away. You know, and it's it, and it's really. Go, no, go ahead. 
Well, I was just going to say that that's, that's basically because we have so many people that are running around out there that have gotten all of their information from television. Okay, it's the same thing. If I go, if I go upstairs, sit in my recliner and watch um, on Discovery Health, I watch somebody doing a brain surgery, okay? Is anybody going to, to let me come in and operate on their brain the next day because I watched this stupid TV show? Give me a break. No, they're not, okay? Because I don't know what I'm doing. All I did was watch a TV show, okay? Same thing. Granted, not as drastic, but granted, the same thing. If you cannot go watch Ghost Hunters and the next day go on this big ghost hunt, okay, you're not ready for it. You have no clue what you're doing. And with the Internet being accessible by everybody in the world just about, okay, now you've got these people that have no clue what they're doing in the least. They take any kind of a picture, see any kind of anomaly, and they say, oh, it's a ghost. You know, I was speaking at a conference in Chicago a few years ago. And one of my perks for being one of the speakers there was I got to go on, all, on their events, okay? And this, they had bus tours and things like that. Well, the first night we were there, they did a bus tour, but it was raining, okay? This was the night before I did my speaking engagement. And I was talking about evidence and that kind of stuff, you know, during the speaking engagement. And, you know... There was, there was actually a woman on the bus who was showing her friend who was sitting next to her in the seat, and they were, their seat was right in front of mine, her ghosts on her digital camera. Look at all these ghosts. Look at all these spirits. There's a whole bunch. It is raining outside, guys. Okay? And so I brought that up. I, I brought it up the next day. I said, this is rain. I said, not everything you see in a picture that isn't enough. Okay? And I tried to explain this, and I did. And this, this woman actually came up to me. I went back to my table where I was hawking my book. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm sitting there, and she, come, she comes up to me, and she says, I was the woman on the bus with, with the rain pictures. And I said, well, you know, I said, I'm really not trying to, you know, make you upset or anything. I'm just trying to present the truth to people so that they can have a clue as to what they're doing out there. And she said, no, she said, I actually appreciate it. I had no idea that I was making that much of an idiot out of myself, you know, <laughs> because she didn't know. And that is the number one problem that we have with everything people are calling evidence. Okay. People have no clue what evidence is. They don't know how to scrutinize it. And if they see an anomaly in a picture, then guess what? It's a ghost. And I want to know, I would love to know, I wish I could see a, a, a show of hands of everybody listening. How many of you pareidolia is? Exactly. Key, key. How many people uh, can define it? Exactly. Uh, not many people do, and you know what? They, you know, uh, even if they could, uh, Brian, I've I've found in many cases they will not accept that. Right, because they want it to be a ghost. They want yeah. that piece. Everybody wants to take the brown lady shot. Okay, everybody wants to take that picture, and they'll make anything into that picture that they can, and that's the sad part, and that's why we have so much crap out there right now in the paranormal. We have people with angry red orbs, you know? No, it's not a <laughs> no, it's uh, lens flare, lady. Yeah, exactly. Um, wow, the well, first hour has flown by. Um, we're going to go have, we'll have our midway break here in a, in a, a few minutes here. I, I just want to add um, that uh, you're listening to Nocturnal Frequency Radio and our dark discussions here with Brian Leffler. Uh Once again, thanks for joining us, Brian. Um, uh, in the second hour, I definitely want to dive into, yeah, uh, what is evidence, um, uh, the whole backstab. And I, I really want to flush out the crap in the, in the, you know what, because it needs to, I, I think the paranormal needs a, a rude awakening, so to speak. Uh, do you agree? The paranormal field needs an enema really bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. They do. And you know what? I think I think we need to start in the second hour. I really do. Um, the lines are open nine one four eight zero three four zero nine five. Even if you disagree, call us. We, we certainly would love to hear from you. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's just it just it, I you know the one thing I hate is. Uh, is having to repeat this over and over again. Uh, but you know what, Brian? Somebody's got to do it. And you know what? I, I look at, you know, I think this is part of the reason why, Alex, I, I don't think any any other radio station wants us. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, when you when you when you look when you look at a lot of uh, the paranormal, we'll, we'll just uh, at, you know uh, peg the paranormal radio stations, um, and you look at all the programming. They're either by the para celebrities, or they circulate the same para celebrities and let them promote uh, you know their new book or or their the new TV show or the new episode. Or the new evidence that they got on the last episode, you know, it, it's and and you know here here comes here uh, comes us and 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 you know shooting that all down because you know what you need it, you need that balance uh, because if you don't have that balance, you don't have people uh, speaking out again, uh, about this. It just uh, yeah. I think uh, Brian, you mentioned what Candyland. You know, it just every become everybody in the paranormal becomes a candy ass, and that's what's happening. Yeah, well, they're they're paranormal ass kissers. That's all it is. And you know what? That was one of the things I really liked back in the days when I was doing Shadow Talk Paranormal Radio. You know, I mean, I wanted that show to be something different. And you know what? We had these people on. We had the the so, so called Paris celebs on, and yeah, they did promote their stuff. But we also asked some real questions. Okay, like, for example, you know, I asked Zach why in the hell he runs away from ghosts. Guess what? After we had him on the radio, he quit running away. Yeah. I asked him yeah. that right on the air. I said, why do you run away, run away from ghosts screaming like a four-year-old little girl? <laughs> if you're going to do that, you don't belong in the field. Exactly. You know, I, I've what? got to you watch, you watch ghosts. I've radio. got a couple of. I've got a couple stories about him too. Uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> him, him, and uh, uh, a mutual friend. Well, <laughs> not a friend. I wouldn't say, uh, Mister RT, uh, Brian. You know RT and 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 uh, and uh, Alex. You know Mister RT. Mister RT. Mm-hmm. I've been around the world. I'm working for the Vatican. The Vatican hired me. <laughs> yeah. Uh you, you know what? We're going to take our midway break here and when we come back again, uh you know what? We we we've just gotten warmed up. Uh we're letting it all loose in the second half. So, uh the lines are open 914-803-4095. Uh when we come back once again, uh opening the paranormal candle worms with Brian Leffler. So hold tight, folks. <laughs>
You're seeing yeah. night vision through one eye, and you're getting flashing lights in the other. You're going to have a seizure. All right, and welcome back to Dark Discussions here on Nocturnal Frequency Radio. Only three shows remaining. Uh, well, actually, two after tonight. Um, yeah, before we say adios here to BTR. Um, and you know what? I'm sure you'll... you'll uh, well, this is just the beginning of the uh, going out with a bang. Um, I, I'm sure our last show uh, will be uh, certainly very interesting when we uh, definitely, uh, you know... Um, <laughs> Get that all sorted out. We'll let everybody know that that's happening. Uh, God, I, I don't even know the last Sunday, which is uh, January thirtieth. Um, yeah, January thirtieth, our, our last show here on BTR. Uh, we will be uh, going into hiatus, I guess, unless we have something set up. Um, then hey, we will let you all know. But uh, we've had a, we've had a few offers and and you know we've looked into things and I think uh, things just I guess don't seem to fit right now or just uh, don't seem to work for us right now. Uh, you know you know what's you know what's really weird, Alex. Mm-hmm. You know what I heard today? Yeah. I, I heard today you hear me that better now uh, before you go on. Yeah, I I, I hear you great. Um, okay. You know, January Monday, January seventeenth today. Apparently, today is the is supposed to be the the most depressing day of the year. Is that so? I thought February was the most depressing month, but I guess day wise, it could be day. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I heard that on the radio today, and I, they didn't really get into details why. They just said it's just uh, you know, I guess national poll or whatever, or I don't know where they get this, the, the info from, but they said. Today uh, is is generally the the most depressing day of the of the year. Um, I don't know, man. We're officially in that day. I don't know. Are do you feel, are you feeling really depressed today? No, not really. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, I think it's crap. Maybe when I'm at work tomorrow morning, I feel that way, but not right now. Yeah. I want I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Um uh really, you know, I'm going to give some shout out. You know, we we don't normally do this, but I'm going to. Uh because, you know, it's good to see some familiar faces in 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 our chat. Uh once again, if you're a guest in the chat room and like to in, uh interact with uh the people in there, just sign up for, you know, well, you know what, do it for tonight. <laughs> sign up for a Plunk Talk account and you know what, just trash it after tonight. Because you know what, I'm not endorsing BTR. I, you know, after the crap that they're pulling, um, you know what. But for tonight, I'll allow, I'll allow you to sign up for a free uh, blog talk account here. And, and you know what, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, the lines are open nine one four eight zero three four zero nine five. If you have a question or comment or something you'd like to add to uh, this very warped uh, paranormal can of worms that were like. Uh, I uh, torturously slowly opening up and and unfolding for those who may not already know the crap that's going on. Um, anyways, I, I wanted to give out shouts to you know Angel, you know a long time listener. Thank you for for tuning in. Good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, Jay, uh, once again, it's always great to, uh, the co-host there with Kel on, on White Noise Radio. One show. Here I do respect. I will uh, definitely say that. Uh, if you have a chance, go check it out. Fry. I, I don't know. I think you guys have moved it to, to Sundays. Uh, uh, Sundays at 10, 10 p.m. Uh, UK time, 5 p.m. here uh, in uh, the Eastern Time Zone. Uh, Justin, uh, great to see you. Uh, thanks for, for joining. Uh, we did have Naz. Is Naz still there? Yeah, Naz is still there. Naz, Stephen, uh, obviously uh, always an honor to have you you know, thanks for the support. Uh, you've been with us pretty much from day one. Uh, and so, so you know, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, you know what? Welcome back, Brian. Well, I'm glad to be back. Um, now that I'm just rocking and rolling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and before before we go on, Steve, I just wanted to make a comment, actually, um, with yeah, respect to um, the shows. Uh, that also applies to books as well, especially now more so than ever. 
you look at some of the books that have come out and they're basically almost a spitting image of what the shows are spewing out as well. So you're damned if you're doing it, damned if you're not. I know, I know uh, Brian, you mentioned that uh, for the first couple of years you should be reading, but you also have to be careful what you read as well because you're, you're bound to find a lot of garbage there as well. Well, you have to look at the context that you're reading in. You know, if you're reading a book that gives theories, um, thoughts, things like that, okay, that's fine. You know, if you're reading about... Um, the Connecticut haunting and how scary it was, well, you're not doing yourself any good. Depends on what you're reading, I guess. You know? Well, yeah, no no doubt. Take I, a look at it. I'm just, uh, uh, the reason why I brought it up is because uh, I tend to, uh, I like reading, I enjoy reading a lot, but um, a lot of the books that I've read in the paranormal, uh, initially when I first got interested in it, I think had more value to them than the ones I'm seeing coming out now. And that's part right. of the problem because as with everything else, like even on the internet, it's getting saturated with all of this stuff <laughs> in there that it's hard to pick out what's uh, good and what isn't or what's legitimate and what isn't. So it's, yeah. there's something else that you might, you know, you, we want to tell the listeners as well is that when you go out and buy books, you just, you know, be very discerning and make sure you read uh, a few pages before you go actually uh, go out and buy it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, if you want to read, yeah, if you want to read a good book, read, read uh, Jay's books. Eh? He needs the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Um, There's a shameless plug for you, Jay. Anytime, Jay knows that. Um, you know, yeah, I, I I have to agree with that. You know, you know, it, it it doesn't just you know come down to TV. It comes down to every facet of of the paranormal. Um, you know, uh, you know, obviously the biggest medium being uh, TV right now. I well, hey, we can't we can't. Discl- uh, discount uh, uh, film. I mean, obviously, with the crap that's being thrown out. You know, of course, there they are movies, and that's what they're meant to be entertaining. But uh, again, a lot of people, like, uh, for instance, we'll, we'll name one movie, uh, uh, Paranormal Activity. Uh, wow. If, if shit like that was going <laughs> I on, I would love it. Yeah. I, I, dude, you know what? I want to I wanna investigate that house. You know what? It, it's like when somebody's telling me. It's like when somebody's telling me they have demons uh, and they're being haunted by. I want it. I want to oh, see yeah. them. Come on, invite me into your house. I'll investigate it for nothing. I obviously, too. Non- non-profit. Non-profit. So yeah, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, but uh, I don't know. Hey. Um, so where do you want to go? Do we do we want to go with with the crap or do we want to go with the evidence? I mean, what what do you feel like? Well, I, think, I, I think they're one and the same in most cases. So why don't we start there? Sure. Yeah. If you want to go Sorry. ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, here here's here's the deal on evidence. Okay, there are three things that can be evidence. Okay, three. And only three things that are, can be evidence. I say that twice because I want people to actually hear what I'm saying. Okay? 35 millimeter film is one thing. Audio cassette tapes, second thing. And videotapes, the third thing. Okay? Digital cameras, EMF meters, um, infrared thermometers, all this other crap, K2 meters, you name it. They are not evidence. They are personal experiences. And, I'll t- and I've got everybody out there going, oh, my God, my digital camera is too evident. My audio recorder is evidence. No, it's not. I'm sorry. And I'll tell you what, anybody out there listening right now that knows anybody that is an over-the-road truck driver or has um, a Votech near him that teaches over-the-road trucking, okay, I want to I challenge you to do this. Okay, go to that truck driver. Go to that school. Go to the, go to an go to go to an insurance underwriters company. Okay, and ask these people if a truck is in an accident. What do you use to photograph the accident? Every single one of them will tell you a film camera. There is not one of them that will tell you a digital camera is acceptable. And I just talked two weeks ago to somebody who used to work for a, an insurance underwriters company, and they confirmed the same thing. If a trucker is in an accident, it has got to be filmed with film, 
Why? Because digital is not evidence, period. It's not admissible in court. It's not admissible to the insurance company. It sure as hell is not admissible as evidence of something that's not tangible like the paranormal. Okay? Get that through your heads and get it through your heads fast. If anybody presents a digital picture and says this is evidence, they are a rookie and have no clue what they are doing because they do not understand the working of a digital camera. Okay? A digital camera as evidence is just as credible as me going into the other room, seeing a ghost, coming back to you, taking a pen and paper, and drawing a picture of it. Neither one is evidence. And I'll tell you why. The, the, the digital camera sees what's in front of it. it. The lens sees what's in front of it. As soon as you push that button, the software program takes over, and it creates you a picture. It is a manipulated picture. It is not a true capture. And people can argue with me all day long. It is not a true capture. It is a manipulated, created rent rendering from a software program. It is not Brian, a just, capture. Just to, add, just to add one thing, Brian, um, just, a, just a correction that, that, that in fact, um, digital SLRs are accepted by uh, some police uh, uh, organizations no. now. I will, tell, yeah. I will tell you one thing about police Today, organizations. Okay, here's the deal. Here's why some police organizations are able to use them. Because these police organizations are wards of the court. Okay? When they come in, okay, they, they take their digital camera in and they take a picture of Mr. Jones laying in his kitchen floor with blood all around him and blah, blah, blah. Okay, snapping all these pictures, yada, 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 okay? They bring these pictures in, and they can ask every cop on the scene, was this the scene that you entered into? Yes, it was. Is this how the body was when you found it? Yes, it was. They are wards of the court. Their word is golden. And there isn't anybody out there listening, you, me, anybody, that can walk into a courtroom, okay, and go head-to-head -head with any cop anywhere, if it's my word against the cop's word, whose word are the court, court people going to take? Whose? True. True. The cop is True. credible in court. I am not. Okay? If I get into a fender-bender accident, and I'm in one of these places where the cops can use digital, and I get into a fender bender accident, I use my 10 megapixel digital camera, which I do own but won't use it for the paranormal. If I take pictures of my bashed up car and take those pictures into court, they will throw them out. I don't care if the police can use them or not. They are wards of the court. It doesn't mean a hill of beans. Digital is not evidence. Because the thing is, is that anybody using it is not credible in the paranormal to say, I took this picture, this was in front of me, and the world can believe it. If that were the case, I could just say, I saw a ghost, and the world would have to believe it. Okay? Yeah. That's what yeah. it all amounts to. Film camera, the shutter opens and makes an impression on the negative. It is a true capture of what the lens is seeing in front of the camera. And anybody that ever asks me to look at their photos, I ask them one question off the top. Is this film or digital? If they tell me it's digital, I tell them to throw it away. You know, and Steve from TAPS told me best probably back in the Shadow Talk days. We were talking about this very subject, and he told me. Now, this is Steve from TAPS, so if any of you are Ghost Hunters fans out there, listen to this. <laughs> this is what Steve told me. Okay, Steve told me flat out, he said, if you're out just farting around with people and you just want to do some, some of this stuff for fun and take a digital camera and take pictures, look at them yourself, share them among your, little, your few buddies and your little friend group, fine. But the second you want to present it as evidence to the world, to the public, it has to be on film, period. Now, that comes from Steve from TAPS, and you see them use digital equipment on their TV show every week, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that digital is not 
evidence. Too easily manipulated, too easily screwed up, and it's also not a true capture. So I'm sorry. Anybody that says I use a digital camera, I say you're a rookie and have no clue what you're doing, period. That's all there is to it. You know, it's cool. You know, it's cool. And, and you know what? Let's add uh, with this, too. Uh, you know what? You're being frank and that's and, and, and honest. And you have to be that way with people. And, and people may not agree with this, but you know what? Folks, if you want to get into the paranormal, you want to research, you want to investigate, whatever, you have to have a thick skin. You have to take this criticism, especially when you're presenting something that you would consider evidence or possible evidence. People will shoot you down in an instant. Experts in fields like photography or whatever, whatever field that may be, they will tell you the same thing. Uh, the scientific uh, community will tell you the same thing. They will shoot everything at you. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't agree with what Brian is saying, Brian's only reiterating what others are saying, and and, and mostly. Uh, people in, in fields that, that are, you know, present these mediums for us that we are using uh, to, uh, you know, somewhat figure out uh, evidence here. Uh, you know, so, I mean, agree or disagree, you know, it's, it's hey, it's a fact of life. Um, yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, just a quick thing here before we go on, uh, Brian. Uh, some people want to know what your thoughts about mediums are. Mediums, mediums yeah. are a great. They're a great tool. Okay, they're no different than an EMF meter. They're no different than any other tools we use. They're no different than, I don't know, divining rods, Ouija boards, anything else. They are just a tool to have in the toolbox. Okay, I've had mediums on my team, but the one thing you have to remember is that it's not 35 millimeter film. It's not audio cassette. And it's not um, videotape. So guess what? It is not evidence, okay? People present this stuff as evidence. They present it as whatever. Fine, let them do it. They're doing it wrong. If, if I've had mediums on my team, and mediums will say, oh, okay, but, oops, I'm getting a feedback. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. But, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were hearing me. I was getting kind of a feedback there. Um, but what you do with the medium, if this medium is able to see, say, a little boy running around in the basement of a house, then you that's a good place to put a camera is in the basement of the house to see if you can actually capture evidence. Okay? That is what a medium is used for. But a medium saying you have a little boy here named Joey, okay, that's not evidence of squat, and you cannot present that to your clients as evidence, okay? That's something that has to be made very clear. Uh, once again, the, the, the lines are open, 914-803-4095. If you have a question for Brian or, or if you want to add something, a uh, comment, whatever, uh, do give us a call, 914-803-4095. Uh, yeah, um, again, you know what, uh, it's, hey, um, agree or disagree, it, you know, the facts are there. Uh, people have to uh, take into consideration, uh, you know, when you're <laughs> – Getting into this, you you really need to know what you're dealing with, um, you know. But uh, you know uh, that's just the way it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Oh man, okay. So you know, tools, you know, uh, and, and evidence go hand in hand. And again, uh, another thing that we can add to this, obviously, uh, Brian, is the fact that, uh, again, not only that, you know, the digital, uh, analog, whatever it may be, um, uh, people uh, really need to know uh, how to handle their uh, tools, um, especially a camera. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, th there are so many people who claim to to um, to capture um, strange law on, uh, anomalies on 
uh, on, on camera, you know, uh, a vortex or right. uh, or um, uh, mist. Yeah, uh, uh, you gotta love it. The, the ghost Ghostbusters coined phrase of uh, ectoplasma. <laughs> ah, look yeah. at I've got some ectoplasma on my picture here. Wow, I've got a ghost. I've got fifty million ghosts. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have orbs. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to discount all orbs. Uh, there, there are certain aspects, and, and you and I discussed this, Brian. Uh, in fact, you uh, you passed along a, a video of a pretty impressive orb, orb uh, manifesting, uh, and that's, uh, you know, uh, when you start to see things like that, then, then you know, the possibility is there. Uh, but, you know, if people are just snapping pictures, uh, you know, aimlessly into um, empty environments or whatever, uh, you know, capturing, uh, you know, things uh, from snow to to moisture to fog to uh, damp mists, uh, smoke, Bugs. Oh, I think my favorite is uh, fairies. I'm sure you've had a few examples of that with your uh, uh, people, uh, you know, coming to you and saying, hey, look, I've got a fairy on film. You know, I I don't know. I've had that a few times. I've captured a few fairies on films myself. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it depends on what Uh, part of the world you're in, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, you know um, it's, it, it's it's but I mean, you know, these are things that you know, be prepared to be shot down, uh, and, and well, you really because, need to go ahead. Well, when you when you when you present stuff, you're gonna if you know you you take some take your picture and you stick it out on the internet, you put it on a message board site like Ghost Village or something like that. You know, you're going to have people that actually know what they're doing that are going to see these photographs. And I'll give you an example of this. I had a, I don't remember, it was some message board site that I used to be a part of and several years ago. And this woman had taken a picture over her dining room table, which had a fireplace with a lot of brass on it. And she had a brass chandelier hanging over her table. And she took a picture, and it obviously was a combination of of lens flare and motion blur in this photo. I mean, it was blatantly obvious. Um, so she's like, oh, look at my ghost, you know, basically was what she posted. Look at this ghost I captured. This is really cool. It's a great ghost, blah, 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 blah. I said, it's not a ghost. It's motion blur and light reflection in your photo. You're you you can't take photos toward anything shiny. I mean, that's just, you know, hello. You know, you don't take pictures in the mirrors. You know, any reflective surfaces you get, you know, you start getting anomalies from that. You start throwing them away because you can't take pictures at shiny surfaces. You know, photography 101 because you're going to get all kinds of crap fed back to the camera. Okay. So I put this down on there, and she berated me up one side and down the other and told me what an idiot I was and that this was a ghost and blah, 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 blah. It just went on and on and on. I looked a little further into the site, and I found another post by somebody that asked how many paranormal investigations you've been on. Of course, I've been on hundreds and hundreds of them. You know, this woman posted in there, the one that was berating me, posted in this post that she has never been on one but hopes she will get to someday. And she's telling me that I'm an idiot because I know nothing about what her photograph was about. It's like, wow. Yeah. you know, And that's the perfect example of what happens. <clears throat> and, okay, well, oh, let's, let's move on to, to, to the next uh, little bit of fun. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I had asked. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think? The personalities that we have to deal with the, with the paranormal uh, in the paranormal community. I guess the the people who like to think that they are leading the community, if you will. What, what do you think, Brian? Well, you know, I mean, there's there's thousands and thousands of self proclaimed experts out there on everything that'll tell you they know exactly what they're doing and every capture is a ghost and. 
all this kind of stuff, you know, and you, you, you simply have to look him in the eye and ask him, you know, well, gosh, how, how long have you been doing this? You know, well, I've been doing it for a year and a half now, you know, well, <laughs> okay, whatever, you know, you've been doing it a year and a half. You should still have your nose stuck in a good textbook from, you know, back when learning some theories, you know, stuff like that. And when, you know, when people come across with that kind of an attitude, you know, I trip them up real easy and real fast, you know, and it, it doesn't take very long at all, you know, and the thing is that I don't care. I'll, I'll pit myself head to head with anybody in the world on the paranormal. I don't care who it is. And I'll go up toe to toe with them on evidence. I'll go everything on it because of the fact that, you know, I've been doing this long enough and I can tell the, the real stuff from the fake crap. And let's take orbs, for example. Okay. You saw that one with the orb that pops into the uh, locomotive, right, Steve? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's, that's, that's an orb that's emitting its own light, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. It's got mass to it. It's not, you know, granted, I wish you could see the original footage of it as opposed to the digitized one to put on the computer. Um, mm-hmm. It's much better. But the thing, you know, it has mass. It's not thin. You can't see through it, Okay. It's not. You actually see a, you know, it's, it's shadow. Yeah, well, yeah, it's emitting light. It's actually reflecting off of that um, steam it. locomotive, and this is yeah. and this is a dead black steel, you know, old, you know, almost like that old black cast iron look, you know, and it's it's yeah. not a yeah. shiny surface to begin with. It's just that dead dark black, you know. It's it's a, it was like a ninety year old look steam locomotive that was actually in that picture or in that video and yeah. you know it's giving off its own light and it's not a reflection off of the infrared camera because it was captured on a sony high age which only has like about an eight foot max range on it for the infrared emitter and this was about i don't know 30 yards away 25 30 yards away that it was captured on on this film so the infrared emitter wasn't even putting light out there so to that distance, um, you know, that's, that's how, you know, an orb photographs, okay? It's got mass. It's white. If you see one that's red, blue, pink, green, or purple, or any other color of the spectrum, it's a light reflection, okay? If you see one that is not white, it's not angry, it's not in love, it's not <laughs> happy, it's not envious. It is a light reflection, Okay? Throw it out. Don't call it an orb in love, okay? Because it's pink, okay? <laughs> Throw it away. It's garbage, okay? You know, it's, and it, you know, the, I've seen, I could go on the internet right now and I could find 2,000 pictures of orbs and I can tell you dust, dust, you know, this one's pollen, this one is moisture, this one is a water droplet. You know, all these different things. I mean, you can get it by just looking at it. And you know, the, main, the way that I found out originally how this stuff photographs, I spent hours and hours in a dark basement with dust mops, um, spray bottles, everything you can imagine under the sun, spraying it, shaking it into the air, and filming it with my 35-millimeter camera, okay? Now I've got a controlled setting. I can say, okay, there's dust in the air. I'm taking a picture of it. This is dust, Okay. Guess what? If you see an orb with a ring around it, it's a piece of dust. Throw it away. I've had people tell me it's got to have a ring around it or it's not a ghost. It's like, sorry, dude, you're totally off base. You know, it's got to be solid. It's got to have mass. And generally, you'll see movement to them. Not always, but generally. Um, yeah, yeah, it's... it's I, again, it, it, again, and some of that could obviously... Um, <clears throat> Uh, come down to not understanding photography as well. Um, if you right. understood, if you understood, um, <clears throat> excuse me, photography, you'd understand that uh, many of these anomalies are very explainable, and uh, most, you know, uh, by the env- environment that you're taking these pictures in. Um, you know, if you don't understand that, if you're not, uh, you know, familiar with photography, uh, a good way to learn is go out and just take pictures 
take pictures and and you know what look at you know memorize the environment you're taking these pictures in and you know document you know okay i'm going to go yeah. out and take some pictures it's very foggy out um you know uh Look at the color or or the texture of the orbs that that are captured in those pictures and document it. Compare it to other uh, ones that you take, right? Um, right. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you know, do you know the worst enemy of a digital camera? The number one you know. worst enemy of a digital camera. Dark Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, the obviously. number one biggest problem that they have is darkness. Yeah. Um, and where are these people using them? <laughs> in the dark. In the, in, in the dark. You know. Uh, you know, I just want to point something out here, Brian. Sorry, sorry to interrupt here. Um, you know what? Uh, I just uh, I got news in, in the chat that that BTR is now uh, throwing out random uh, commercials throughout the show. So people listening really? to the show live, yeah. Are, are are being subjected to random uh, ads, you know, and, and and now they want to go ahead and charge for these shows. You know, it's ridiculous. Like, come on, and you know what? Uh, I'm not, you know what? I'm not getting into, gonna get into that right now. It, it's just ridiculous. Alex, did, did, Alex, did you have, did did you have a chance to see those videos that I that I forwarded to you? Yeah, I did actually. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts? Them, well, you know what, Sorry? I took a quick look at what I was trying to do. I was trying to do some updates on my PC. I was also doing that as well. So I didn't get a chance to really focus too much on it. But I did uh, take a quick glance at them. And they, they, they do look uh, pretty interesting. I'm going to have well, to okay. go through them more properly uh, when I get the opportunity. Okay, just quick thoughts on, on the orb one. Which one? The, the, orb, the locomotive one? Yeah, the, the orb. You know, the orb appearing and manifesting. Okay, hang on. Oh, the manifestation. Okay. Okay, that, yeah, that, you know what? Now, again, I'm, I wasn't there, so I can't really say uh, too much on it, but when I first looked at it, it uh, and you're talking about it, it looks like there's a shadow manifesting. It, anyone who doesn't know or who's not there or doesn't know you well, Brian, is going to look at that and say, well, that's somebody walking by there. And it, this is part of the problem with this field that I know. Um, no matter how... Like, only you would know who was there, what was there. Just like when I would go on an investigation with someone, I could, you know, cry until I'm blue in the face saying no one was there. But then it's my word against everybody else's, unfortunately. Uh, well, I can take the – one of the things I can do with that one is I can take the original videotape and I can show you what an actual living person looks like when they walk in that same area. Because we had it happen about 10 minutes prior to this being captured. We had the uh, person that runs this place walk through the same area, and you can see every detail. Okay. Well, that's, that's what you're going to have to do, unfortunately. Like, like I said, if all, you're doing is, if all you're doing is showing this video alone, uh, people are going to question that. And they're going to say oh, they, like they can question it all day long. And, and I know people will, and that's fine. You know, they can question it all day long. You know, I I have the original videotape that can back it up, and I can actually show you what a living person in that same exact spot looks like, because the person that runs this walk through the same area, and he's actually about the same height as this shadow was. And we can also one of the things that I wanted to talk about too is security in an investigation. One thing that our team always does is we have great security with our investigation. We know where everybody is at all times. We know if we've captured something that was caused by us. Um, how many people have ever watched a television show and heard somebody on the show whisper? I'm sure everybody has. That's the number one cardinal sin when it comes to doing EVP work. You know, you never whisper, ever. And if you do whisper, you notate it on the tape. You know, yeah. that was me. I whispered, or that was so and so. I heard they whispered. You know, you always and, and not, bring that out and you say it. And yeah, and not not only that. You also, you know, if, if for instance, if there's some something like explainable noise in the background, you yeah, you you know, right. you, you you make a note of it. You you say something. Uh, that's something right. I I do all Absolutely. the time. Yeah. Yes, and a lot I of mean, people these, don't these, do it, these and they come things, back and listen. Yeah, but these things are these are simple things that that many people will not take into consideration. Exactly. You know, and it's uh, just like. Uh, oh, go ahead. go ahead, sir. 
No, I'm finished. Go ahead. Oh, I, w- I was I was just going to say that, uh, you know, like, for example, a lot of people have probably seen the uh, the Ghost Hunters episode when they did the Queen Mary, and they had somebody mess with their camera and the blankets on this one bed in this one cabin they were in. Um, had they put the camera on the other wall, they could have encompassed the bed and both doors, which were access points, into that room. You know, if you're not capturing yourself walking away from the camera – when you leave the camera and capturing yourself walking back to the camera, when you go to pick it up or move it, then guess what? You're not in the right spot because everything that approaches that camera needs to be on camera. When you, when you set up, you set up in such a way or in a corner of a room, wherever you're at so that you're panning that room and there's no way to get to that camera without being captured by the camera. And that's something a lot of people don't think about. They'll put it in a doorway and leave access behind the camera or whatever. You know, you've got to think about these things ahead of time so that you can eliminate. The only way to get to a paranormal conclusion with anything is to eliminate the mundane. And that means every piece of mundane. Okay? You have to eliminate it. If there is one mundane thing that crops up as a possibility, you cannot reach a paranormal conclusion, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. That's a standard, hard, fast rule that cannot change. If you can put anything in that could be mundane, it cannot be paranormal. And that's just the facts. So that's another reason why I eliminate all of these things that, I, that can be eliminated prior to the investigation. Okay, when I set up a video camera, it's set up in a way that it has to capture me leaving the camera and it has to capture me coming to the camera. And anybody else that would come or go from that camera is captured on film. So you've got to have it that way. If you don't, you've got bogus evidence. Absolutely. Uh, I just, uh, a little tidbit there, Jay, Jay shared in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the, uh, in the chat, I have to get out. I, I really do. Thanks, Jay, for bringing this up. Um, <laughs> Taps Paramedic uh, apparently on the cover has Mr. Robbie Thomas. <laughs> talk about talk about struggling for uh, material, as Jay put. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that that's definitely a struggle. Definitely a struggle. Um, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it's just it's just a, a, amazing. Uh, yeah, you, you're you're absolutely right, Brian. Uh, when it comes to security and securing a location, uh, you know what? That you know, it gives you a peace of mind. Not only a peace of mind, but it gives you a piece of you know something to be able to back out any possible evidence that you may capture or uh, discover. Obviously, uh, knowing mm-hmm. that your knowing that your location is secure. I mean, obviously, one of the hardest uh, aspects is, is, is uh, you know an external location. Obviously, it, it's a little harder um, to to uh, secure uh, being you know outside. Um, but you know, obviously, you do the best that you can. But interior, uh, th- there shouldn't be as many much of a problem. Obviously. Uh, you know there there are still issues. Um, uh, you know we we in fact I remember one time I think I told you Brian uh, we went into uh, one location a private home uh, to do a uh, an investigation but um, before that uh, we had um, did our uh, pre investigative interview with with the family uh, and and set out the guidelines uh, if we were to come into this in to do an investigation. Uh, we would only like you uh, present, uh, if if possible. You know, have the you know children looked after. Uh, you know, we don't really need we don't really need to, to traumatize them anymore, especially with all these uh, strangers being in their home and stuff like that. It might scare them. Um, but not only that, uh, you know, um, we we would like to secure the location. Uh, make sure that we have as much control as possible and, and you know in determining uh what might be going on here and uh, they they uh immediately asked well is it okay if we invite the neighbor over 
And I'm like, no, uh, you know, I don't think that would be a good idea. You know, uh, the less here, the better. Uh, you know, it would be great to just have the group here and you, yourself, obviously, being here, uh, this this being your house. Um uh, are you sure we can't invite the uh, neighbors over? I said, no, that, I don't think that would be a good idea. Um, okay, fine. Uh, we agreed. Uh, you know, a couple of days later, whatever, uh, we showed up for the investigation. Uh, sure shit. Uh, their neighbors were there sitting in the living room. And an uh, open concept, uh, loft-like um, living room open uh, to the rest of the house. Uh and I immediately said, I said, you know, I thought we agreed that, you know, no neighbors, that it would only be you guys. Oh, they just wanted to come over and see what you guys did. Well, you know what? Uh, well, I, we can't investigate. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't have, we wouldn't have complete control here of of the environment. Oh, well, you know, um, uh, yeah, you know, we could just sit down in the living room and play uh, Trivial Pursuit on the TV. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on, you, you know, like that. honestly, you know, uh, you know, honestly, I, I said, look, you know, y- you hate to say, look, um, I, I, I just, I, I just want to. S- you know, be as, as fair as possible here. But you know, look, I, I, you know, we drove all the way out here under the assumption that we had an agreement. And you know, please, if you'd like us to investigate, then then they have to leave. Uh, they, you know, they they wouldn't agree. So we just, I said, okay, well, we pull up stakes and left. Uh, if you'd like, if you'd like us to yeah. do an investigation, uh, then then call us, and, and you know, this time uh, we'll, we'll come out, we'll do it, just to make sure that it's just you guys. You know, yeah, uh, Jay. Th- thanks for the uh, yeah. Th- thanks for the link there. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually looking at the new Top Paramag uh, cover, and yeah, uh, Robbie Thomas is there. <laughs> psychic, psychic freak is right. Yeah, psychic freak, psychic fraud. Um, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, wow. Uh, you know what? 14 minutes here, Brian. Uh, the time is flying. Uh, Alex, are you still with us? Are you alive? I am still alive. Yes, I was going through the videos, actually. Oh, you're going through the videos? Ah. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. So, uh, so um, I don't know. Did, did you want to dig in a little bit deeper, uh, Brian? I don't know. Uh, how, how how deep do you want to go in? Um I, Which I say I'll go we, as deep as you guys want to go. You tell I, I, me where I you say, want to go. We'll go. I, I I say we wash the filth here. What do you What do you say? We say. Can you say it again, Steve? I say we wash the filth here from the paranormal. I really do. Okay. Sounds um, good to me. I, I mean, okay. Is there something that you wanted to discuss? Well, you know, if if you don't mind, I would like to give an example of backstabbing. No, you and go right ahead. That, I, I, uh, comes about. You go right ahead. If, uh, you know, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you absolutely. what. I used to uh, be on a show called Dark Plains Radio, and yeah. there were four of us involved with that network, and we decided to have a uh, um, con- uh, convention get-together thing up here. We found a great place that, to have it, and uh, we started putting it together. Um, ticket sales were really not very good, Um I guess because we weren't having it at Waverly or one of those places that are, you know, famous from taps or whatever. But uh, we sold some tickets. We had some people coming. Um, We put down money on a hotel to reserve a block of rooms for the guests. Um, Had all that stuff going. We had all these uh, people coming to speak, and we had everything ready to go. Um, The four of us, the four of us, not just me, as it was portrayed on the radio, uh, on a, a different show, were um, decided that we had to cancel the event. So the plan was that uh, we discussed was for each of us to pitch back in a hundred and a quarter because we put five hundred down on this hotel out of the ticket money. So we each were supposed to pitch in a hundred and a quarter to make up the five hundred, and we were going to pay back the people that bought tickets first. Okay, they purchased them through PayPal, and we were going to send them a refund. 
and an explanation that we weren't going to be able to afford the event and we had to cancel it and here's your ticket money back. As soon as we did that and everybody was paid back, we were going to make a blanket announcement. Well, it turns out, you know, and this all happened on a Saturday morning that we decided this. So obviously to get the money together, get it back in the bank and get it back into PayPal, um, it hadn't happened yet. Well, Monday evening, the other three individuals that were involved with this decided that they were going to go on the radio show and tell everybody that I had canceled this event on my own and I had taken all of the ticket money and I had stolen it. (laughs) I mean, that's as ludicrous as that sounds. I mean, you know, I, I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't listen to their show. And, um, you know, it, I started getting nasty emails and phone calls all night long and all this kind of stuff from angry people. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yes, we did decide to cancel the event, and yes, everybody is getting paid back. They said that I stole the money and I wasn't going to pay anybody back, and they should file complaints in uh, PayPal. Um, People that did file complaints in PayPal, it actually took them two weeks longer to get their money back, which I thought was kind of a sweet little uh, justice, but uh, because they were the nastiest ones, um, cussing me out. And uh, so because it had to go through their their mediation process thing. That's why it took so long. Um, the money was actually put in there. But uh, so, yeah, these guys decided that they were going to throw me under the bus so that they could try to look good and try to salvage everything for themselves and didn't care about uh, me. I ended up paying that $500 back and it, it, it all in all total, it ended up costing me about 1300 bucks. Wait a second, Brian, 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 I'm still waiting for my money. Brian, come on. Where's my money? <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah, well, everybody that had tickets said we had a record. I could prove it. <laughs> I can yeah. prove I paid everybody that. <laughs> um, but uh, the thing is, though, is that, you know, that, that was the, the thing that happened. And I'll tell you, this field is loaded with people white just like that. You know, they want to, you know, one of these guys even sent somebody a bogus um, uh, resume that he was this big shot radio guy trying to get hired with a terrestrial radio station. And these two radio stations, radio corporations that he, he mentioned have never even heard of him. <laughs> He's not even part of it. So, you know, I mean, people are conniving snakes and they're all looking to make a buck, you know? So, you know, one word of warning to everybody out there is be careful who you're dealing with. And I'll tell you what, these Paris celebs, whatever, <laughs> you know, go for I it, whatever. Exactly. If anybody wants anybody wants to worship them, go ahead and worship them. But I'll tell you what, you know, they're they're not worth the photographic paper their pictures on, for Christ's sake. So I agree. I you know I agree. Take it for what it's worth. I, I I completely agree. I really do. It's 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 really like uh I have met some uh, some 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 pretty shady people uh in the paranormal um and you know what they're not all like that. I'm not saying they're all like that, but you know what the a good majority of them <laughs> You know, yeah. and I'm talking. I'm talking like you, Brian, behind the scenes. Not, not this. You know, I'm, I'm going to go get his autograph bullshit. Uh, I mean, you know, sitting there talking, friend on on, on that friend le- level. You know, like people that, um, wow, you at you know, at one point probably kind of sort of respected, and uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden the true colors come out. Yeah, they do. You know, when it when it comes down to money and it comes down to their them potentially being famous or making a few bucks, you know, they'll they'll stab their own kid in the back if that's what they think they can get. You know? Oh, oh, sure. oh man. I I I really have a, a story I just I'd love to, but you know, uh save the uh save the legalities here. I I just, you know, one of these days <laughs> I, I'm gonna write a book and just oh god there you, you go. know 
Yeah, exactly. It, it's just it's ridiculous. It really is. It, it uh, what what how things have come down to this. It really is. It is terrible, terrible. Um, mm-hmm. uh, when people uh, when the field is driven by drama, crap, uh, just bullshit drama. Uh, these yep. Paris celebrities that that are um, making the field look really really bad, shameful. Um, it's, uh, it's terrible. Uh, wow, man. Uh, two hours have pretty much gone like that, Brian. Uh, wow. Oh yeah. They go fast, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Especially when you start oh, yeah. talking the truth. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, you know what? More of it needs to, to be talked about. Uh, it needs to get out there. Uh, you know, enough with the, uh, facade. Um, the face plates, whatever. Uh, we need to see the truth, and you know, uh, yeah, it needs to start now. Uh, you know, we've said this a million times, and unfortunately, uh, you know, without a movement, I, I know um, we've had several people on the show, and, and you know, it, one thing's for certain: when something does not have an explanation. Uh, a current explanation for what happens. Exploitation, right? Yeah. Well, that happens. Uh, Plus, you've got such a major wave that everybody's riding, you know, that's been caused by all the all the hype and all the drama and everything's out there, and everybody wants to jump in and be a ghost hunter, you know, and all this kind of crap. Well, you know, it creates the hype. I mean, people are going to take advantage of that. You know, and they do every single day. There's snake oil salesmen on every corner. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Quick question here. Um, Naz would like to know, uh, do you believe in demons? Do you you believe they're real? Um, Not as most people define demons. Okay, people define demons as an inhuman entity that basically crawled out of hell. Um, No. Sorry, never seen evidence anywhere in the world of that. Um, I would love to. Hey, believe me, if if there was a chance of seeing some kind of evidence of a non-human entity, fine, show it to me. But as far as I know, nothing exists in the world that can even be considered non-human. Um, the way I look at demons, I look at them as just basically a very dark entity. Um, I see ghosts. Ghosts run the gambit, okay, because ghosts are people, okay? Basically, that's what makes people who they are. And in the world, you have Mother Teresa's and you have Jeffrey Dahmer's and you have everything in between, okay? And that's what happens when when your body dies and your ghost moves across to the other plane of existence, whatever we want to call it, um, and they exist there. Now you've got somebody with a personality like a Jeffrey Dahmer, okay, or an Ed Gein, for example. The only thing that slowed those types of people down are the, are the risks of getting caught, okay? Now yeah. they no longer have a risk of getting caught, okay? Yeah. They can do whatever they want, you know? So they become, those are the types of personalities that become a very dark, very powerful entity that really loves to cause problems and mess with people and do whatever they can to make their life a living hell. Those are the types of spirits that I would refer to when people say demons. That's what I think of. Um, I, I've never seen evidence. I'm evidence-based, okay? If there's no evidence of it, I don't just believe it because people say so, you know, and I don't think anybody else should either, okay? Oh, Brian, you, know, I, you don't believe in stuff because people tell you to. True. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I, I have a quick clip here, and I want I want your uh, thoughts on it. Um, it sounds demonic to me. I, I want you to. I want your thoughts. Okay. Okay. Now you all must die. <laughs> Is that not demonic or what? <laughs> Steve, die. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm well, a demon too. <laughs> okay. Quickly, quickly, you know, you Brian, make... get... hey, Come on. <laughs> yeah. Quick, quickly get your info out there for uh, people who want to find Brian Leffler and your group. 
Well, if you want to find us, basically go to uh, www.nprteam.com. That's NPR for Northern Paranormal Research, team.com. And that's that's how they can find me. My email address is there if anybody uh, wants to listen to the show and uh, wants has any comments for me or wants to talk about anything, uh, feel free to email me. My email's right there on the first page. And I, uh, I threw the link in the chat as well. Brian, you know what? Thanks for joining us tonight, man. It uh, certainly was uh, great to have you back. Hey, it's been a lot of fun, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm sure if we, we get the show back up and going elsewhere, we'll definitely have to have you back. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. going to we're gonna have to look into that uh, see if we can get the show back up. Uh, I don't think I can go without doing the show for too long. <laughs> well, did you ever check on the idea I gave you, Steve? <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't looked into it. I certainly will. That's definitely one one okay. area we will be looking into. Definitely. There um, you go. Take care, my friend. You too, guys. Have a good night. You guys too. Bye. All right. Uh, that was Brian Leffler. Uh Always uh, intriguing to have him uh, on the show. Uh, he was the second time he's been on the show, eh, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, the second time. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a while since Brian's been on the show. Um, next week, again, dark discussions. Uh, more of the same, but worse. Uh, BTR, we're, 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 I think we're going to become... One of BTR's worst enemies. <laughs> no. Hmm. Um, no, you know, uh, I, I just have to say they're in for a rude awakening. Come, come February 1st, they're in for a rude awakening. And we certainly won't have any part with uh, paying for the service. Absolutely not. Anyways, uh, tune in next Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Second of the remaining three shows. Uh, again, the last show is, uh, what did I say, January 29th, Alex? Uh, I think it's the 30th, but I'll have to check. Sorry. No, 30th. 30th. Sorry. January yep. 30th is the last show here. Uh, no, actually, we'll uh, the 31st. Oh, yeah, 30th. No, sorry. I'm going to say 30th to the 31st. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Certainly uh, great to be back here on Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Uh, un- unfortunately, it was uh, it's it short-lived here. Sad yeah. but true. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, anyhow, leave your questions, comments, uh, suggestions on the show page here or on Planet Paranormal. Uh, the link is on our show page here as well. Uh, we certainly, or iTunes. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we always do. Uh, thank you for the support, and uh, we will uh, hear from you next Sunday. Well, we won't hear from you, but uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you next Sunday night. Uh, Alex, take care. Have a good night. Take care, everyone.